Welcome back everyone. Thanks for checking out another video. I have this really nice ninth gen Civic Si in the shop for a tune today. It has some really cool parts on it. It has it put down some great numbers. Uh, it's also a super color. Apparently this is Dino Blue Pearl, which is kind of fitting, but uh, super nice color. Really nice ninth gen Civic Si sedan. I really like these ninth gen Civic Si's, uh, especially in the sedan form. This engine has a set of the four piston drop-in cams, which everyone has been asking me about. It put down some good numbers today. Why don't I go through the details of the build, uh, cut to some shots of the dyno poles, and then I'll share the final results at the end. All right, guys. So this Civic uh, actually competes in the uh, Ontario Time Attack Challenge. It actually does double duty. It is the owner's daily driver, but he also uses it to compete in the Ontario Time Attack Challenge. Last year, he actually won first place in the novice division. This year, he's going for more. Um, the car is actually sponsored by some local companies, Stage 4 Motorsports and Hard Race Canada. The car is here because the owner did some upgrades over the winter and he wanted to retune it and see what we could get out of it. So like usual, I'm gonna start at the intake side of things and work my way through. It has a three and a half inch Acuity cold air intake, it has a 70 millimeter OEM Honda throttle body, apparently it's at the ridge line. Uh, it is still using the original plastic K24 Z7 intake manifold. Uh, it has a set of DW550 injectors. On the exhaust side, it has a full race downpipe. He is running a cat, it's a Jesse cat, and a full race three inch exhaust. Uh, the interesting part of this build is it has the new four piston drop-in cams. I've been getting a lot of questions about these cams and everyone wants to know how they're going to perform and I have some really good dynographs and data to share with you guys. So why don't I cut through the shots of the dyno poles and then we'll uh, share the final results and I'll, I'll share some comparison data. Right, guys hopefully you enjoyed those dyna poles i'm sure you're eager to find out what the car put down today so up on the screen i have the final results from today it put down 214 wheel horsepower and 189 foot pounds torque and i know a lot of you guys have been asking what these cams will make and four piston claims about 15 to 30 horsepower and torque for these cams and they definitely do deliver because of four pistons claim of 15 to 30 more horsepower. Everyone assumes that these cams should be putting down like 230, 240 horsepower uh, and like 200 torque. But uh, it's not so much the case because they are a drop-in cam that doesn't re require any uh, valve train adjustments. And yes, they do help the engine to breathe better up top. They're not really geared for peak, peak power. So you're never gonna really see that peak horsepower number. You're still gonna see that same roughly 210 to 220 uh, peak horsepower, but what you do get in exchange is a whole bunch of mid-range power uh, by comparison to say going full bolt-on on one of these ninth gen SIs because 
This, this engine is basically full bolt-on, except it doesn't have what most people put on it, which is the RBC intake manifold. And that RBC intake manifold usually is a, is a trade-off in power. You usually get a bunch more peak horsepower, but you lose a lot of mid-range. And uh, as you can see in this graph, there's a ton of mid-range. So why don't I bring up a dynograph of a full bolt-on car that I've done um, with stock cams, but with an RBC intake manifold. All right, so up on the screen in red is the results from today with the four piston drop-in cams. And in blue is a ninth gen Civic SI that I tuned that had full bolt on. It was cold air intake, bigger throttle body, RBC intake manifold, a set of injectors, full exhaust and everything. If you just go by the peak horsepower numbers, both of these setups put down 214 wheel horsepower. But if you look at the area under the curve, these four piston cams without the RBC intake manifold put down a, a significant amount of power from basically 3000 RPM up to 70, almost 7500 RPM. So more power everywhere under the curve in that range. Pretty good results in my opinion. The interesting thing is the owner does plan to swap in an RBC intake manifold at, at some point on this setup. When he comes back to tune with the RBC intake manifold, we'll have some really good data of the performance difference between the stock intake manifold and an RBC intake manifold. So these graphs I think are a pretty good example of the difference between say the stock intake manifold and the RBC intake manifold when you're full bolt on and you have one car has the uh, four piston cams but not really an apples to apples comparison. So why don't I bring up a dynograph of a ninth gen that was basically full bolt on, but still had the stock intake manifold, but no four piston cams. All right guys, so up on the screen in red is still the results from today. In blue is another ninth gen that I tuned. Uh, it has basically all the same parts. It had an acuity cold air intake. It had actually a full race down pipe and a full race uh, cat back. It didn't have a cat. And this car does have a cat, so there's a slight difference, but realistically, probably the closest example I can find uh, of a very similar setup. So same intake, same exhaust system, uh, same intake manifold. This one had RDX injectors, I believe. This one has 550 injectors. Um, th there is a difference in the throttle body, but I don't think that's gonna make too much of a difference. But uh, you can see with the four piston cams, you're kind of making more power everywhere over the stock cams. So I definitely think it's worth doing the cams. You get, you get a significant amount of power everywhere, basically. And uh, it is a fairly easy mod and you get to keep all your mid-range power versus um, the trade-off with the RBC intake manifold. So I don't know, interesting data guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I do look forward to seeing this car coming back with an RBC and then we'll be able to compare how the uh, intake manifold performs with these cams in the future. So yeah, I think that's about it for this video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Like always, if you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. And if you do want to know more about this car, the owner has his own YouTube channel and Instagram. I'll link them both in the descri video description for you if you want to check it out. But that's about it. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.